For this lesson, I'm going to work through the Cambridge paper from June 2016, paper 3-2, question 2. What I've done to start is I have laid out the entire um, financial statements for the manufacturing account and the income statement, which is what I would suggest you do when you are faced with this question in an exam. Um, Obviously, you would read through the whole question and then in required, you would see that A is to prepare a manufacturing account and B is to do the income statement. The other questions then go on from there um, asking you to detail and explain and calculate and we can look at those later. But these two we need to start with and we actually need to do them at the same time rather than doing this completely and then moving on to the next. You'll see why. Firstly, read your information methodically, step by step, um, making sure that you've got all the information that you need. Kemp's Limited is a company which manufactures a single product. Finished goods are transferred from the factory at production cost plus 15%. Unsold goods are stored in the warehouse. As soon as you see that they've told you the markup is 15% in the factory, I would go to my manufacturing profit at the bottom of my manufacturing account or my manufacturing statement and I would make a note that it is 15%. This means that I don't need to try to come back and look for the information later. Selected balances extracted from the trial balance for the year end of 30th of September 2015 were as follows. At this point, I would highlight the date, 30th of September 2015, simply so that you know where you are. It's quite important because sometimes some of the adjustments or information um, refers to a specific date. And if you're not using the same date, it can be quite problematic because your calculations will be out. So the trial balance showed revenue for the period as 1845. Now, the first thing we need to do is decide, is it a cost of manufacturing the product or is it something that's going to be on the income statement? Hopefully you realize revenue is obviously all your sales. So we're going to put it up over here, um, 1845. Okay. Notice that I haven't tried to finish my manufacturing account first. By using the information as it's given to me, it means I don't need to read through the question paper twice or even three times over. Um, I only go through it once and having a layout like this already means I can just pop the answers in as I need to. The next thing we've got is purchases of raw materials. Raw materials are not a cost of running the business, but rather a cost of making the product. If you bought a finished product and sold it instead, you would not have a raw materials account. So therefore, we're going to put it here in manufacturing. Because raw materials are one of the main direct costs, you can see it's used here to take a part of your prime costs. And I've actually put it as my first item, as my raw materials used. And I'd left a space because generally you will have to calculate this quite carefully. I would normally start with my opening stock, um, but I haven't got that yet. If you want, you can leave a line for opening stock, or I would argue that otherwise you can just work from the top down and put opening stock later on as you need to. I'm going to leave a little space because I like to work the way that we normally do. My purchases is going to then slot in over here with the amount of 794750. I'm using the two column method just because I quite like to use the first column for all my calculations and then the second column is all the totals. It just to me makes a little bit more sense logically and I find it easier to remember what I'm doing. Carriage inwards. Remember the carriage refers to the transport of these products. So I'm going to need to include it in my manufacturing account and this is specifically because it's carriage inwards. In other words, it's the goods that were coming in to my business. Raw materials, in other words. 
if it was carriage outwards, it would be referring to carriage of the finished goods that I might be distributing to my customers, which would actually make it a selling and distribution expense, which is part of my operating expenses. But we don't have carriage outwards yet, just carriage inwards. So I'm going to put it over here because it adds to the cost of my raw materials that were used. Even though it doesn't feel like it, um, you can't physically see the transport, it does add to the costs that I have incurred and I have to factor it in when I'm working out selling price, etc. Then I am given factory production wages. Now again, these are obviously costs of making the product rather than just running your business if you were buying and selling. So it's going to be part of my manufacturing account. And because it's specifically related to my production, it's part of my prime costs. So I'm going to put it here as my direct wages. Direct wages can also be called direct labor, or you could have written factory production wages. We don't need to calculate it further because it is just one amount. If we had extra adjustments to do, we could work it out um, and then in the first column and put it in the second column. Then we've got the factory supervisory wages. Now, this is a little bit more interesting. Because it says factory, I'm going to put it here in my manufacturing side. However, it's not production wages, it's my supervisor wages. So I can't attribute it directly to the production of the product, and therefore it's going to be part of my factory overheads. So I can put here factory supervisor wages. Or I could say indirect wages. And that's 64,000. Oh, sorry, I'm running out of space. I'm going to not write the wages. I'm going to just put in the amount of 64,000. Obviously, you do want to write as much as you are able. Um, if you have more space, you can also continue on the next line if you need to. Whatever you do, however, don't ever abbreviate or you will lose marks. The next thing is administrative wages. Now, administrative wages, if I was buying and selling the product instead of making it, I would still have those office costs. Therefore, it's not a factory cost, but I'm going to put it in my income statement as part of my operating expenses. So over here, I'm going to show my administrative expenses, administrative wages. That amount is 115,000. I've then got general expenses, and general expenses are also not specific to the factory. Um, it's just looking at generally the running of the business, um, what are those costs. So I can pop it in underneath here as well as general expenses. I've then got two types of depreciation. The first one is for factory plant and machinery. Because it's relating to the factory, I need to include it in manufacturing. And because it's depreciation, it's a little bit difficult to allocate it directly to a particular product. So we will put it as part of my factory overheads. So you will show your depreciation over here. And the amount is 37500 You can, of course, be more specific as to what type of depreciation it is. I've just left it as depreciation because I don't have a lot of space. The next depreciation is office fixtures and fittings. Obviously, the word office tells you it needs to be over here as part of your operating expenses. So my depreciation for the office is going to be in over here 37,500 and I'm so sorry I realized that I wasn't using my ruler properly the factory depreciation in fact was 55,000 Rand this is one of the reasons reasons it is so important to use a nice little baby ruler like that to keep your place so that you're in line and you can see 
55,000 for the factory and 37,500 for the office. Right, so we've now used all the basic trial balance figures. That's not so hard. Um, and having used it, it means that we're now ready to go and look at the additional information. The good news is that just by doing that, you will already have earned quite a lot of marks. Now we take our additional information into account. At the 30th of September, there were accrued general expenses of 5,000 rand and prepaid general expenses of 3,000, sorry, and it's dollars, not rands, forgive me. So what you need to do is take both of these into account for your general expenses that are shown over here. Your general expenses, um, you will need to adjust. Um, you would want to say, if there were accrued general expenses, you would want to show plus 5,000. In fact, I'm going to give myself a little bit more space here. I'm going to move my depreciation down, and I'm going to show my workings for expenses in brackets as 78,000 rand. Um, the depreciation, sorry, was 37,500. And you can do this yourself as well. Um, obviously, it's difficult to be a working in pen, but if you leave space for yourself, it's easy enough to just add something in and otherwise write on another line and use an arrow to show where you need to go. I'm just lucky that I'm able to erase it. So if there were accrued expenses of 5,000, I will add those because I still owe them and my expenses are more than what I had recorded. But there were prepaid expenses of 3,000, so I have to say minus 3,000 to show there. Okay. But now we've got something else interesting. 65% of the general expenses related to the factory. So that means that of my general expenses over here, only 35% relate to my office. So I can say times 35% and then work out the answer. Over here, I am going to need to add in my general expenses and basically that is going to have to be the other 65% once I've worked it out. Okay, This will come to 52,000 Rand and your general expenses will come to 28,000 Rand. Okay. It is a little bit more detailed of a comp uh, um, calculation, but it does illustrate very nicely what I mean by having to divide and allocate the expenses between whether it's a part of the factory or is a part of just running your business normally. So you can see we've taken it and just sent part of it back to the factory. We are then told details of our inventories. The first thing, raw materials. Raw materials at the beginning of the period were 110,000. So that means that I want to take into account opening stock over here of 110,000. And then the 30th of September 2015 is going to be my closing stock. Now, hopefully you can remember from last um, year, from your AS levels, that when you're trying to work out how much of the product you have used, you can work it out quite logically by saying, well, if I had opening stock at the beginning of the year and I add all the things that I purchased, that will tell me everything that I had available to sell or to use in this case in the factory. Then, if I happen to have stock left over, I need to subtract that because I obviously have not used it or if you were working um, with finished goods, you have not sold it. So that is your basic stock used calculation that you will use here and you will also use when we're doing the cost of sales a little bit later on. So you'd work all of that out and you would put your answer at the top um, and your total cost of raw materials should end up as 784,000.
Right. Um, <clears throat> your work in progress. And by the way, you hopefully you notice as well that although I have now popped a, t popped a total in there, in fact, I'm not doing all my totaling as I go along. I will come back to that later because if I've got something that I need to change, I don't want to have to change all my totals at the same time. Now, work in progress. Again, it's the same calculation as here. You add your opening and you subtract your closing. And the reason for that is that whatever I had that was in the factory at the beginning of the year being made com and comparing it to what was at the end that was being made, that's going to contribute to what my actual manufacturing cost was. In other words, the cost of making those goods. So I'm going to put it in over here. 17500 will be my beginning cost and 14000 will be my end that needs to be subtracted. Do always remember that your closing stock needs to be subtracted. I like to use brackets because it's very easy to see that it's got to be minus. And then the last type of stock, remember when you're a manufacturer you've got lots of different inventory. So in this case now we've got our third type of inventory which is finished goods. Finished goods basically is the same as your normal stock if you were just buying and selling because this is the stock that you are going to now be able to sell to the customer. So I've got an opening stock of 19550 and a closing of 21505 and these will contribute to my cost of sales. So my cost of sales will actually be worked out by having my opening stock of finished goods and you can actually write off finished goods there. You want to then show how much was transferred from the factory. I will write from factory here, because otherwise you might look at it and say, but where on earth did that come from? And then we will put the closing stock. And of course, the closing stock will be in brackets. Taking from the balances given, I've got 19550. Oh, sorry, I'm going across. I need to um, work in my first column here, 19550, and my closing will be 21505 in brackets, so that I can then go and work out what my actual cost of sales would be, and the cost of sales will go in over there. That concludes the basics learned in week one. In other words, drawing up your manufacturing account and statement of income very simply. Next week, in the next session, we'll have a look at the um, profit that you would want to add for manufacturing.